It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Mets Cult Packers. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Everybody, host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFall, who's busy typing away, getting his shares in. But uh, while he's doing that, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Hunter's Blend Coffee, the official coffee of Up North Journal. And as always, we always talk about the UNJ promo code, which you can see right down here below me. If you type that in, go to Hunter's Blend coffee.com and you place your order you use that promo code and it'll save you 10 percent on your order so make sure you get over to huntersblendcoffee.com get you some good stuff that's what we're drinking tonight and it'll do you right yeah, that's right so all right i'm so, ready so what's a good word you, you done typing over there I feverishly done typing yes feverishly all, all right so um yeah no I, man talk about some hot weather yeah a little bit of storms around the area mm-hmm mm-hmm yep a lot of rain yeah Thunder, lightning, the whole nine yards. Hot but weather. Glad I cut the grass early, like Wednesday. Wish I did. Didn't happen. So, what's going on, Danny? But, you know, with this weather, mm-hmm. you're able to cook out. Grill out. I've been doing a lot of grilling out this we year. grilled out the last two days, and uh, you posted some pictures of it. And yep. We had some uh, on the grill yesterday and the day before. But, you know what? Isn't it always good to add to the flavor of whatever you're cooking? Absolutely. That's why I... Kind of work with this guy, uh huh, and uh, found out that he has his, him and a few of his buddies have a uh, seasoning, Rebel Six, All right. and we're gonna have him on the show. Hey, what's going on tonight, Rob Harrell? What's happening? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. Hey, not a problem. Uh, you know, before we get started with this, Dan said he was going to bring samples over tonight, and I really expected him to cook a little something with these seasonings. Danny did not bring samples for me to eat. But he did bring samples, though. I just misunderstood. That's all right. That's all right. We didn't expect much out of Danny, though, did we? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, yeah, Rob works with you. I can tell him now. You guys work, you guys work close. <laughs> See? Tell ya. That's good. He'll pay for that in some way, shape, or form. But anyways, yeah. Hey, uh, Rob, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, you know, we've talked before, obviously, at work and uh well i tried to talk to you at the ata show but somebody wasn't there at the ata show yeah 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 <laughs> right yeah it was uh my son's first hockey tournament ever so couldn't miss that so i had to uh pass the ata duties off to my partners there so couldn't meet up with you guys this year right exactly but we got hooked up i got you some samples so mike you'll be happy but rob how did you get into seasonings for meats, fish, and whatever game possible? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, I've always been one who loves wild game meat, whether it be, you know, deer, um, wild turkey, pheasant, fish. So anything I could do to try to switch up a meal, try different recipes, was always something I was into. Um, one day, me and uh, a buddy of mine were approached by somebody that he went to high school with, and they said, hey, we want to partner with Rebel Six, which was our sort of outdoor group at the time. We were into filming hunts and, you know, kind of uh, sharing our passion with the outdoors, with the community. And they wanted to do a private label Rebel Six line of wild games and seasonings. We were all about it. We, you know, we, we jumped on it as soon as we heard about it. And um, the first year, it was basically our name on their product. Well, as we started getting going, we're like, hey, this is pretty cool. We can, we can really do something here. So we started getting into it more, uh, started developing our own recipes and playing with it a little bit more, started doing some more sales, reaching out to different contacts. And after about, I don't know, 10 to 12 months, we decided, hey, let's go full bore into this and um, do this ourselves versus a uh, private label firm. So we went all in. We uh, came up with a few recipes on our own. We uh, you know tweaked a couple of things that we had prior. And right now we've got nine different flavors right now of uh Wild game seasonings and rubs that go on fish, that go on wild bird, uh, deer, elk, you name it. So we're, we're all in right now. It's been a blast. All right. So 
let's 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 start right there getting these seasonings together so did you gather around all the seasonings in the kitchen and bring them all together and just start mixing and matching and and trying to figure out what was going to be good on this and that yeah you know it's it's kind of a trial and error process um one thing that we really try not to do is overpower the meat you know there's different seasonings out there that you can put on that's really gonna take the flavor away from the wild game meat and all you're tasting is a seasoning and that's not something we wanted to do so all we want to do is enhance the meat. Um, we came out with a different flavor sort of geared to each, each species of wild game. And uh, it's really worked well for us. But what we found is that we've started, like I said, trial and error process. We're starting to put some stuff on vegetables, on potatoes, uh, even on our eggs in the morning, on our omelets. So it's sort of become a, uh, uh, a who's who of what, what can we you know, come up with next. And um, it's been an adventure, but uh, we've got a little bit of everything. So okay, starting starting with the uh, we'll start at the one end of the spectrum, the the fish ones. Um, yep. Go catch some fish and start trying, huh? Is that how is yeah. is, is that how we're doing it? Yeah, basically, uh, we've got a Great Lakes fish rub, which is geared obviously to the Michiganders around here that uh, fish all the stuff in the Great Lakes. Uh, really great on walleye, uh, perch. Um, those are sort of the big ones that we we try to gear this one towards. It's got a little bit of a citrus hint to it, uh, some sugar. It really makes the uh, the fish come out. And um, the other fish one that we, we had to start with was a Midwest fish. This one is um, a little bit more uh, paprika, sort of a uh, spicier, uh, less less citrusy type feel. So you got kind of two different options for fish. And then this year we came out with what we call our coastal rub. This one right here is a uh, uh, rub that's got sort of like a blackened, type hint to it at the end but starts off with a citrusy fruitful type feel and i've got family in florida so they were asking for something specific to some of the uh, saltwater fish that they're accustomed to so i came out with the uh, the coastal fish this year that's brand new for 2019 all right cool so mike's got the great lakes one in hand and he's going to try it right here this is for uh, it says walleye and what's the other oh, walleye and perch blend okay. yeah so he's going to try that right here and then he's going to try the midwest Give that a shot, Mike. Uh, I know you guys are both fishermen, so I won't stick my uh, my finger down in the bag. I'll sprinkle it here on my my hand. Here you go, Daniel. I'll hand you that. Would have been better with some fresh walleye, though. Absolutely. Well, I was hoping <laughs> you'd show up with fresh walleye. Man, that's good. You know who we can talk to? Ken Cicluna. He can get us some fish. Well, that's right. That's good stuff right there. I like that one. Great Lakes. Yep, that is good. I like that. Okay, now this is the the Midwest large and smallmouth. Okay, large and smallmouth bass. People, I, I've always talked to people, and they say, eh, it's not that good to eat. I've heard other people say, well, if you prepare it right. You know, putting this stuff with it, talk a little bit about that. You know, uh, what's what's with the, the large and smallmouth bass, why people don't typically eat it, and what will this do for it? You know, I think it's a, I think it's a misconception, really. Um, and, and honestly, with, with any wild game, it's all how you prepare it. You know, if you take the time, um, don't overcook it. Don't make it so it's rubbery and it doesn't, you know, taste taste uh, fresh. Then all this is going to do is give it a little flavor, add a little bit of butter, throw it on the grill. It's really easy to use, and you don't need much. Just sprinkle a little bit on, and it's going to give it a little bit of a pop. And people aren't going to know it's bass when you taste it. They're going to, you know, think it's some other fish that that they're not typically used to eating. Okay. So uh, you could probably tell the difference between the Great Lakes and the Midwest as you try that that, uh, that new one. Okay. Well, here he, it is. I'm almost. He, he's going to try it, and that's kind of funny the way you said that. Uh... Uh, Ken Cicluna on our on our team was was bass fishing and he had a couple bass and somebody actually on, on the post said I'd rather eat a sucker than a bass. But uh-huh. how's how, how's the Midwest taste? That's got a different flavor to it. I mean that's really good. Yep, completely different. Mm-hmm. Right, we got a little bit of everything and they're all different. Absolutely. Yeah, it, see that's the difference. You know, it's not just a oh, it tastes the same. It, it, it's a totally like a one eighty mm-hmm. on the on the rubs. Right and. How did you come up with, uh, now those are for, you know, this large mouse, small mouse, walleye, perch. Now, did you have to send it down to your relatives down in Florida to help you out with the, the coastal stuff? Coastal stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, that coastal one, I sent them down some samples of the Great Lakes in the Midwest. And they're like, what are we supposed to do with this? You know, this isn't saltwater fish. And I'm like, well, you can put it on the saltwater fish. Just, you know, try it out. Like, no, no, no. We want something for the specific saltwater fish. So that's when we came out with the coastal um, I knew some of the flavors that they were using, obviously with the groupers and the snapper and all that that they're that they're eating mostly down there. So I wanted to give a little bit of a bite to it. So there's a little bit more pepper, like I said, at, at the end of it, but it's got a very citrusy, um, 
there's some orange zest, some lemon zest in the beginning, and then it ends with a little blackened, you know, peppery type feel at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's it's gotten tons of compliments. Uh, they've been sharing it with their friends, and um, I'm hopefully, you know, gonna gonna be filling some more this year down to Florida and the, and the Gulf Coast there that uh, my family's on. There you go. Get your family to do a little sales for you. Well, I, I got a question. I got a question for you here on the uh, the fish. I mean, typically when we're we're talking game meat, red meat, you, you know, or even birds, you do a dry rub, you know, and, and this is a powder. Uh, with fish, uh, is this something? I mean, do you put it on the grill and start it and get a, and sprinkle it on top, flip it, or do you do a pan sear, or can you put this in with like a breading mix and deep fry it? We've done all those three options. So we have taken uh, some catfish and we've done some like deep fried catfish nuggets. Mixed it in the batter uh, with that Midwest, and it turned out great. Um, we've also done the pan-seared one where, you know, you put a little butter in a pan, throw the uh, the fillets in there, and just dust a little bit on. And then the uh, the grill version, too. We, we throw some uh, fillets on the, on the foil, throw some, uh, you know, seasoning on there, just dab a little bit on there. And the great thing about it, it doesn't burn off. Mm -hmm. So some of the other seasonings you'll see if you sprinkle on, it's falling off the grill or it's burning off. But if you take this on... And you just rub it in a little bit with your fingers. Mm -hmm. It's going to get into the, the actual fillet itself, and it's not going to fall off or burn off. Okay. You can really taste that, that, that flavor as it absorbs into the meat while it's uh, cooking. Okay. You know, and, and along since we're talking about fish, I, a lot of people here, especially in Michigan, but also in the Midwest and towards the West, you know, do some trout fishing. You know, and then we've got the big lake trout. We've got salmon as well. Do you have anything that would go along and complement that? Or are you, are you working on anything? So, yeah, we, we've thought about that, the, uh, the trout and the salmon one. Um, we're playing along with, with some of the, maybe some pink Himalayan sea salt. So trying to come out with something that's more geared to, to a, a river-type fish, the salmon and the trout. Um, it's, it's hard to find something that will satisfy everybody. But, again, we want to make something different. And all these are mix and match. So, sure, you can throw on, you know, the Great Lakes fish on, on a piece of salmon or, or some Midwest on some trout. Give it a whirl. Um, again, we throw it on potatoes and vegetables and all that too. So, um, yeah, try, trying to make sure that we're we're coming out with something different. I just don't want to come out with something that's just a uh, you know a different version of something we've already got. So, right, we're taking our time with it. But yeah, that's definitely one we're looking at for sure. You know, talking about cooking fish and using rubs or seasonings with them. What's the number one mistake most people make when they when they try something like this? Uh, I think really what they try to do is overcook it. Um, fish is. Every fish is different, right? Um, people get nervous when they're cooking fish, especially with family members or, you know, if their wife's not really into seafood or something that's fresh out of the lake. And they try to make sure it's well done enough for, uh, for the family. But really, if you take your time, cook it slow. Don't put it on high heat. Cook it slow. Let it simmer. And you can see the, the meat morph into something that's, you know, raw versus very edible but yet fresh and, and still uh, – you know, soft and moist enough for, uh, for you guys to enjoy. Yeah, overcooking, it's definitely the, the number one thing that I've heard as the, uh, you know, biggest faux pas. Okay, all right. Cook it, but don't overcook it. And and, 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 we're, and right now we're just talking about the uh, the fish side of it. That's only three of them. I know, that's only three. <laughs> we're only talking about the fish side. Uh, the next segment, we'll probably get into the other ones. But, uh, Rob, where can people go to find Rebel 6 Seasoning? So we are mostly online right now. Uh, E-commerce for, for, for us has been great. Uh, our website is www.rebel6rubs.com. You can order right from the website. And we do have a special promo code for you guys and your guests. Uh, if you put in North Journal in the coupon code section, you will get 20% 20 off, 20 off your order. So um, something special for you guys and all of your viewers to, uh, to enjoy some Rebel 6 seasonings. And, uh, yeah, check out the website, rebel6rubs.com. We will ship it right to your house. and usually takes about two or three days to, to get it out to you. That's awesome. Guys, gals, I wasn't expecting this. That's cool. You guys are doing something like that for the listeners tonight. That is awesome. Uh, a couple comments on, on live online right now. Uh, Charles Byram says uh, he voted no because uh, we always season everything, so no extra time needed. Uh, Tom Gensel says smallmouth out of cold water is fine. Warm water is better to release. And then Billy Hoffman says, I love the sweet bear rub. These guys are great. Sweet bear on eggs is fantastic. And in the next segment, you get to try that. Okay. All so right. You, uh, uh, like you said, Rob, uh, you're putting on everything else, uh, eggs, vegetables. I'm telling you, it takes, it takes every standard meal to a whole new level. So it makes a standard original meal 
into something new every night. That is awesome. I'll tell you what, uh, let's go ahead and let's take our first break. We're going to step outside, take our first break. When we come back, we'll get into the other game meets and uh, continue the conversation. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Second segment of the show. We're just talking with Rebel Six about getting seasonings for your meat, your wild game meats, your fish, your vegetables, your yeah. regular dinners, the Any, whole nine yards. It seems like anything you can put it on, maybe except cereal. Uh, I don't know. Could you put it on cereal? Uh, well, you could. <laughs> I don't know how good it would taste. But we we do have a question for you, Rob. Um, yeah. Are you working on, uh, uh, Billy Hoffman asked, do you have any news on a low or no sodium type blend? For the guys, uh, ah, for the heart. Yeah. You, you know what, guys? I'll be honest. And, and thanks for the question, Billy. Um, yeah, we do multiple of trade shows, multiple of farmer's markets and, and different uh, local venues. And that's the number one question we get asked is, what's your low sodium option? Um, a lot of the McCormick's and the standard grocery store type blends are so much filled with salt. There's so much sodium in those things that um, it's really pushing people away. So. The number one thing, like I said, we've been asked is a low sodium blend. We're working on one. Um, we do know that that's something that the market has really demanded is a low sodium blend. I can tell you that every single one of our rubs is a, uh, a lower sodium. It's not the lower or no sodium version, but it is very low sodium. We have a high level of different ingredients in here. So it's not just your standard salt with a little bit of pepper and other things mis- mixed in there. It's a high mix of different things. So although... It's not uh, high sodium. We are working on a, uh, a, a low sodium version that we can uh, we can share with everybody because myself included, I think uh, I think uh, you know too much salt is uh, is definitely bad for us. So um, when we're using our, our regular stuff day to day, salt is definitely uh, something people would be more conscious on. Well, yeah. we ain't, we're we're not getting any younger, so well, yes. no, you know, and that's the biggest thing. I, uh, since Danny and I started doing this exercise stuff, uh, I noticed when I, I get anything with high sodium. So all of a sudden, I just retain water big time, and it's like it's instant weight added right onto you. So, no, good, great question. I, I really yep, appreciate absolutely. that. Absolutely. And, and, and Charles Byron says, "Awesome deal." He's going to check out, check it out. So, so first segment of the show, we talked about fish. Mm-hmm. How about we go over to some meat? I like meat, and and, and the first one I'm going to bring out for my, for Mike here is the sweet bear rub. Awesome. Skin to dry. Sweet bear. Rub. So, all right. Any as we go through these that we have to try. Um, is it something that you hit you hit you when you were when you're like you're like looking at bear meat and you're like, boy, this would taste good this way? And then yeah, so the, the the reason behind the sweet bear is we wanted something that uh, you could really bring out a sweetness to the bear meat. Typically, bear meat is very dark, very rich. Um, you know, there's a lot of fat content to it, so you try to you know remove some of that fat content to get out the wild game flavor. But we think bear. What do you think? You think honey. Right. Yeah. So uh, in that sweet bear mix that you're trying there is a little bit of honey powder. There's a little bit of brown sugar. So it's really going to give a sweetness to it. Not overpowering, but just enough to really lighten up that uh, that dark meat that uh, that is bear. I'd like to take a spoon to that right there and just start eating it. That is good. <laughs> it's really good stuff. It does. I know, have... I know people that put that on chicken. Mix it with some barbecue sauce, and they got a little honey barbecue action going on. So it's great on everything. That is awesome. I could see that on chicken. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that could go really good on chicken. But uh, that's awesome. Um, all right. This one's kind of unique. Wild boar rub. Okay. So we, we know everybody that cooks out. When you're typically cooking ribs, pulled pork, um, you know, anything that has to do with, you know, the, uh, the pig, even bacon. Um, that right there is the perfect stuff to mix on something that you're going to put on the grill that uh will keep it moist keep it dark um some smoked paprika some chili powder it gives it a little bit of a uh of, of a small bite but uh man is that stuff good and it gives it a lot of nice color too so you, you're telling me that we can make bacon better is that even oh, possible candied bacon there's nothing better than candied bacon 
There you go. Candy bacon. Bacon, candy wrap bacon with candy wrap bacon. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're going to try this. I, I love I, bacon. Bacon is, is you, awesome. I don't know. I don't know one person that doesn't like bacon. You, you could wrap anything in bacon. You could wrap this table in bacon. It didn't make it taste good. Right? So All right. There you go. He's going to try that. and. Uh... Oh, yeah. I can see this on. I can see that on bacon. It's got, yep. like you said, it's got just a little bit of zing to it. Oh, that would be awesome. Dan, yep. you're, you're leaving that one here. I can leave that one. <laughs> I'll cooking, share them with we're you. We're cooking bacon this week. <laughs> All right. It's so, got a little bit of zing at the end. Yeah, just you a like little. That? Oh, yeah, that's just good stuff. a little stuff. bit. Mm-hmm. So what's the, what's the other one we got here? Uh, we'll get to that one. We're going to save that one. We'll, we'll save that one. But I want him to go in down to, uh, so we have the bear, we have the boar, but you also got one for... Whitetail. White elk and whitetail, right? Yeah, so I understand I'm talking to the elk man now. Congrats, Mike, on your uh, on your draw. That's, that's Thanks, huge. man. Well, we drew a tag, but that doesn't mean that we've got one yet. We still got to get one. But when we get one, then we're going to use the rub on it. Perfect. Yeah, if you get one, let me know. I'm sending you a bottle, and you can uh, you know lace that whole thing with some Rebel 6 elk rub. There you go. All right. So how, how did it come up oh, for, for – I know it's just a natural progression of into the meats, but uh, the venison one and the elk, elk one, what, what's kind of the flavoring you're, you're shooting for yeah. on the elk? So the uh, the spicy whitetail is uh, kind of a, a Tex-Mex theme. If uh, if you get a hold of that one, that's got more of a taco, nacho type flavor. It's kind of a Texas whitetail type theme. And then the elk is more of your standard red meat. So you can use this on elk. You can use it on venison. You can use it on just your regular steaks or, or hamburger. And that's really going to uh, moisten up some meat, um, some of that tougher meat, lean meat. Give it some uh, flavor with some sugar in there. Um it's, it's really got a good blend that it doesn't, again, overpower the meat, but it gives it enough flavor that you can definitely taste the difference when you're tasting the elk uh, versus just your standard burger. There you go. A little bit added it to the meat. Tastes wonderful. Just a little, little, mm. little, um, I don't know if it's good as candy wrap bacon, but. Candy wrap bacon, man. A, that sounds awesome. I know, doesn't it? <laughs> that, that's a good line, buddy. I'm going to um, have dreams about that tonight. Any other uh, down the meat lines? Did we Did we hit them all? Yeah, so the other one that we came out with in 2019, uh, I mentioned the Coastal that we came out with. The other one that's sort of my pride and joy, um, Dragon Dust. Dragon oh, yeah. Dust is um, not a jalapeno or habanero type peppery spice. This is more of a spicy stir fry type mix. So you can put this on chicken, put it on vegetables, put it on burgers or anything like that. And it's going to give you a nice uh, slow heat, a slow burn, and it doesn't tingle your lips or make your nose run or anything like that. That you know, if you go to any old wing joint, you're gonna you're gonna experience those symptoms. This is really going to give you a nice bite, a smooth bite. But after each bite, it goes away. It doesn't linger. It doesn't stick with you. So again, not to overpower the meat, but give it something, give it enough heat that it's really going to uh, impact the uh, the flavor profile. I think that was the one. One. Of, I think that's the one we did. You have that? Was that at ATA? It, yeah, we did. We uh, debuted it at ATA. Yep. Okay, I think I think we tried. That yeah, we tried chip. the uh, yeah. potato chip. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. It, 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 like you said, it, it didn't make you start crying, and your nose didn't start running, and your lips were like burning. It was just a a nice. Mm. Yeah, after we walked away, it kind of like tapped you on the shoulder and got a hold of you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, now we want some water, but right. uh, that's awesome, you know. And, and that's a you know, uh, so you're looking down that down the meats line. Uh, I think he's pretty much. We got the wild hit, bird. Hit, well, we haven't gotten to the birds yet. Oh, we got wild. Okay, oh, that's the last one you got there. We're, okay. we're hitting. Yeah, the, yeah. So, as we go, um, and, and that actually begs a question here by Tim Seas. What about turkeys? You got something for turkey? Oh yeah. So mild wild bird rub. Let's see if I can find it here. So I shot a turkey this year. I doused both turkey breasts in this, filleted them, put them in the middle as well, and it came out phenomenal. I also uh, last year in the uh, in November did my entire Thanksgiving turkey with mild wild bird, and uh, we had my neighbors over at the time just uh, just visiting, and they had a little bit of our turkey. Their Thanksgiving celebration was a couple days later, and they actually said, "Forget our recipe, we want this." They did their entire bird with mild wild bird <laughs> as well once they once they got a hold of it because it's phenomenal. It's not it's like nothing you guys have ever tried before. Um, it's got a whole different flavor profile than you would expect of something with bird. Um, there's a holiday Christmassy feel okay. when, you, when you try this. Well, so. he's Mike's going to try it right now, and he, we're going to see if he gets into the holiday Christmas 
spirit and start saying let, Christmas. Let me know what you feel there, Mike. I, I I can I can smell exactly what you're talking about. It's kind of got that that holiday Christmas type smell to it. Now let's see what it tastes like. Yeah. All right. There you go, Danny. Hang on to that. Yeah. I can't describe it, but yeah, there's something there that's. It reminds you of Christmas. Yep. Yep. I don't... Gives you a little warm, warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Yeah. A little bit of uh, the, the secret ingredient there. I'll let you guys know is a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah. And that little cinnamon just sets it off. That is good. That is awesome. That's another one I can take a spoon to and just sit and eat it. There you go. <laughs> See? Got that little bit of cinnamon. That little waft in there. Yeah, that is good. That is awesome. Now another question coming from Tim. What about putting it on popcorn? Ah. Oh yeah, you can put anything on popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, any one of these. Um, you know, even even if you're looking for some kick, like I said, that dragon dust will go good on anything. So if uh, if you want to try some dragon dust on some popcorn, you might be the first person to let you know to, to do that, Tim. So let us know how it tastes. <laughs> there, 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 you go. there. Tim can be the uh, he can be your taste tester for taste popcorn. Taste tester for popcorn. <laughs> Perfect. So um, just like in the first segment, where can people go to find these? Yeah, so we are in a few retail stores uh, local. We're in uh, Great Lakes Meats in, in Howell. Um, we're actually at a place up north called uh, um, uh, Master Stop and Go up in uh, Saney uh, in the UP. Oh, wow. And we're in a, yep, yep. And then uh, the Pit Stop a restaurant in Chesterfield, we're also in there as well. So trying to trying to get our feet wet around the local area. Um, we're talking a couple of Ace Hardwares, and we know Michigan – uh, has a lot of Ace Hardware, and Ace Hardware does a great job of promoting Michigan-made products. So uh, talking a few of those locations. So we're, we're growing, but mostly online at our website, www.rebel6rubs.com. Uh, our full lineup is there. And, uh, again, North Journal coupon code will get you 20% off. There you go, guys. That's awesome. And that's... thank you for doing that for the listeners. I mean, that's that's a, a great savings for anybody that wants to go over there and, and check it out. That is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll take our next break. We come back. We want to pick your brain a little bit uh, and, and take you down a road and, and figure out the outdoor side of what you do. So uh, we'll ven- great. we'll venture down that road here as soon as we come back. We're going to step outside real quick. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back, third segment of the show. Man, I'm salivating now. I want some meat. I want to use some of the seasoning. Hey, hey, get out. Tim C is from Lem Walker Game Calls. He's he's wanting to put it on popcorn. That's got me thinking about popcorn now. Bacon, <laughs> right? God, candy I, bacon. Can't, I, I'm trying to lose weight, not gain weight. That's why you only you only have the the seasoning. But <laughs> right. you don't have a, you just just eat the seasoning and then pretend. Oh man! But um, you know, Rob is is doing the seasoning thing for for all the, the wild game and stuff out there. But he's also done um, Rebel Six Outdoors um, and, and chasing the outdoor dream that we love. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rob, how did, personally, how did you get started in hunting and, and how, how far back does it go? Yeah, it's, uh, it goes back a while. Um, my father, uh, he was an outdoorsman. I wouldn't say an avid outdoorsman, but uh, he worked a lot. So any chance he got to go up north, um, do some deer hunting, uh, do a little bit of duck hunting, you know, in the early mornings on a weekend or something like that. Uh, those chances didn't come around often. So um, when he when he did get a chance, he went. And I remember a couple of duck hunts I went with him. Um, I went up north. We had a lease up in uh, Clare. And I remember sitting with him. And I was just a young boy and obviously uh, too young to shoot or anything like that. But just sitting with him in the outdoors, um, crunching on a bag of potato chips. He's probably ready to kill me. <laughs> I was not being quiet at all. But uh, th- those are the memories that I remember. And then um, as I got older, I started, uh, you know, going to different friends' properties. Uh, one friend had some property up near Mount Pleasant, about 40 acres. And that's really where it started to take off for me, um, getting some private land access and being able to explore and experience, you know, different encounters with different animals um, really sort of drew me in. 
and uh, I didn't get into bow hunting specifically till probably uh, my senior year of high school, uh, freshman year of college. And once you start bow hunting, it's it's a game changer, right? I'm sure you guys know it's uh, it's it's something that is unlike any experience with the with the rifle when you're sitting in a tree stand trying to figure out and and uh, maneuver close to these uh, these magnificent creatures. And um, my my passion just grew from there. And the more I hunted the more I wanted to explore and go to different areas and learn about the animals and habitat and patterns and um, just understanding that you'll never know it all. So it's a constant chase. It's a constant journey. And uh, I guess I guess that's why they call it obsession, right? Because there's never an end to it. It's just uh, a continuous uh, habit that, that has no end in sight. Mike and I talked about this the last couple of weeks. We talked about what drives the hunter? What yeah, drive, it, it, it's a drive. It it becomes a passion, and like you said, Rob, it's a, it's an obsession that yeah, it's almost yeah. like a yeah. the kill is only like a minuscule part of the end game, but it's the passion that builds trying to outsmart the game, trying mm-hmm. to uh, whether you're duck hunting, whether you're uh, Ken's trying to hit a big bass in the lake, or we're trying to get a whitetail, whatever. But um, it, it just fuels it even more. And 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 thinking about that. Before you had kids, what's your pick out your best memory that you can remember that in your mind says that uh, that was cool? It, it's not even about, uh, I, I wouldn't even say it's about a particular hunt or particular animal. It's deer camp. Experiencing <laughs> deer camp with your friends, your family, uh, just that camaraderie sitting around a fire, you know, uh, the, the night before opening day. It, it's all that. And it's hard to explain to people when they say, well, you know, you went up there and you didn't even come back with anything or anything. You know, it, it's not about the hunt itself or the kill. It's about being with family and friends and just experiencing uh, the outdoors all together and, and what nature provides us. So that that memory right there, my first deer camp with, uh, you know, my friend who, who invited me up to his 40 acre parcel with his family was uh, something I'll never forget and um, something I, I want to experience it every year. You know, it, you talk about that. I remember, I don't know what age it was. It was before I was able to hunt, but going up with my dad to quote unquote deer camp. It was, it was public land at that time. But like you said, sitting around the fire, when you go up and it's all the guys, I don't care if you're five years old or if you're 50 at yeah. that point, it's like you're with the, the men and, I, and it's no offense to, to the ladies, no offense at all. But you know, back when we were growing up, that's what it was. Yep. And, and you felt like I'm one of the guys, I'm part of the tribe. I'm part of this group of men who are going to go out and do whatever it is that we think we're going to do. You know, it's, it's in sitting around that fire. I mean, how many times have you been to deer camp and you sit around a fire? Nobody says a word. You just, yep. you just sit and you stare into the fire and in, in 10, 15 minutes has gone by and you look up and you see that glow in their face. Yep. No, absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned, you know, just being part of the guys. It, it's it's men from all walks of life too, right? You could have a guy in the group who's a CEO of a huge company. You could have a guy who's you know a garbage man. Right. But at, at one time, you're all hunters and you're all experiencing that moment together. And there is no status, there is no different level or anything. You are all equals, and you're all in the woods together, experiencing Mother Nature. So it's it's fantastic. I've never heard that phrase used, but as soon as you started saying it, I knew exactly what you meant because we've all experienced it. Yep, exactly. Yep. And then that's my. You talk about uh, deer camp memories uh i couldn't hunt but i remember going to deer camp there was 15 of us in camp uh and actually two of them were the oldest daughters of two of the hunters so Mm -hmm. we had the girls in camp and um it was just that whole 15 people together for that week was just whether it was at breakfast whether it was at dinner whether it was it was just a, a uh, you all work together, right? Well, that's the one, yep. like you said, the campfire. And then what's the next thing Danny just mentioned? Food. It yep. brings brings people together, you know, and then the hunt. I mean, those those three things, we all culminate around that to bring all of us together. It's, man, it's just, it just gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Absolutely does. And it's just one of those things. And, and, and that, now I asked him purposely that question because now he's now has kids mm. and, yeah. he's, and he's passing on that tradition How's that changed the dynamic of for you for hunting? It's it's put everything back into perspective, right? I mean, when you're when you're a young man and you're chasing the biggest antler buck and trying to you know get your best score under your belt, um, trying to travel different states and do all these different hunts. As soon as you have kids who are old enough to understand what you're doing, what the outdoors is, what hunting's all about, 
it, it changes everything. Um, I took my son out last year for his four, first full year of hunting, so deer and turkey, and um, just sitting out there and, you know, putting the eye black on each other. And, um, of course, we had to bring his iPad because – Kids these days they get you know <laughs> they get easily distracted and uh, early in the morning they can get pretty tired too. So, um, but as soon as I said, "Oh look, you know, there's a deer," everything's down, shuts it off. He starts shaking, and um, it, it's something you'll never forget as a father. Your first hunt with with your son or daughter, and uh, just to see them have the same reaction that you do as a grown man, even though you've been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, you know, everybody gets the shakes no matter how old you are when you see uh, a deer and. Um, we, we were able to take a deer this year and, uh, also a turkey on his first turkey hunt. So, uh, we got some meat in the freezer and, um, he was super proud of coming back to the house and showing mom and his sister what he had accomplished. What did that do for you in that moment when, when that animal went down, what emotions were you feeling? I wasn't even looking at the animal. It's, it's amazing. Your attention just watches him and his reaction and his, his heart, you can see almost beat out of his chest. Um, <laughs> It didn't matter what that was. It didn't matter if that turkey was a tom. Luckily, it was a two-bearded, um, nice nine-inch tom. Uh, but it could have been a jake. It could have been, you know, uh, a small buck that we had an encounter with. It, it didn't matter. It was all about watching him and his reaction with his first encounter with, with the outdoors and the power of harvesting an animal ourselves and bringing it back. Um, he's seen me bring animals back before, but when he's done it, that that feeling of pride you can see just came over his face and um as a father that made me proud to uh to be able to pass that on just to him as an early age and i can tell um it's in our blood right it's uh mm -hmm. it's definitely in our blood he's gonna be obsessed just like i am you know i i've told the story many times but uh my kids i've been with all of them when they shot their first deer uh but when my daughter did it um i got emotional i mean i yeah. I, I i teared up like crazy I, I don't know what it is but when you're with the girls uh, but it just, it puts it in a different perspective. It's, you know, the, yeah. the boys become men at that point, but, uh, the girls, it's, it's different. It's, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's, uh, it's like you said, you're, you're proud of what your kids have accomplished and you see them take that step into adulthood at that point, knowing that, Hey, they provided some meat for the table, you know? Right. I, don't, right. I mean, it's it, primal. It, 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 it is. And I, um, Kelly, my oldest, uh, she was with me. When I shot a doe, I was with her when she shot a doe, but then she was alone when she shot her buck, hmm. and, and all with a bow. And I think what you, you, you're kind of, and I, I blubbered like a baby mm -hmm. crying out in the field, I'm not yep. going to lie, but it's just that whole, I don't know how to explain it, it's just that whole emotion that she did it, and yeah, watching her do it by herself, and I'm going to go on my own, and she did it, and <laughs> it, it was really cool. Now, is your daughter into hunting, or not there yet? She is. She is. Um, you know, as soon as I come back with, with the buck in the bed of the truck, she's hopping on the tailgate and wanting pictures <laughs> with it and everything like that. So she's uh, she's going to be five years old in November. Um, I was blessed to have a daughter born on November 17th. So uh, it makes opening weekend a very interesting weekend every year for me. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's it's uh, it's great because, um, you know, she is definitely not your average girl. She's uh, a tomboy. Um, she wants to do anything that I'm doing or – her brother's doing and part of that is hunting so she's itching to get out just like he was that's awesome my cousin his daughter born november 15th so 17th yeah i can it, it, it's always interesting that first weekend uh it, i yeah i called oh, home yeah. and, and, or she was actually up a couple times too but uh that's awesome getting the family out there and getting them uh into the woods is, is just whether they're turkey hunting deer hunting and 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 now he's probably using them as test subjects for his <laughs> his seasoning. Oh, that's good stuff. I bet you your wife likes that. Here, try this. Here, try that. Here, do this. Oh yeah, yeah. She she's got her favorites too, though. You know, sometimes she gets stuck on a certain one. She's like, all right, I want this tonight. I want that tomorrow. I want it again. You know, two nights from now. So try to keep it her. Uh, trying to switch it up every now and then is is also good too. Well, well. Speaking of that, who does the cooking at home? You or her, or both? Both. I will say both. Uh, she's got some recipes that she tries, and then usually uh, if it's anything on the grill, I'm usually man in the grill. Um, I got a nice smoker here as well, so anything in the smoker on the grill, we're definitely uh, we're definitely exploring all these different things on different meats. We just made some hunter sticks out of some grind from last year's deer uh, today, so uh, we got a fresh you know a couple bags in the freezer right now, and uh, kids are probably chomping down on those instead of eating their dinner right now too. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, 
And, and speaking of that, um, you know, the first two segments or so, we talked about the seasonings. We talked about uh, passing on. Uh, are you going to be doing any outdoor shows in the upcoming months where anybody in whatever area that you're going to be in can come visit you? Absolutely. So we are going to do the uh, Woods and Water uh, Outdoor Expo this year for the first time. Um, we are going to be there September 6th through the 8th. Uh, the Rebel 6 booth will be a 15 by 15 tent outside. So we are definitely going to have some samples out there cooking. Uh, so follow the smell, follow the aroma, the fresh game. And um, a couple of my partners are, are over on Lake St. Clair. So they bring in the walleye. And uh, I can tell you just from the samples that in, in response that we get out to customers at the show, you will not want to miss these samples that we hand out of fresh uh, walleye with our, our different seasonings on there. Um, so yeah, come see us at the Woods and Water Expo September 6th through 11th and, uh, stop by for some good samples. Oh, samples at Woods and Water. And, and that show is a, is typically a knockout show. Always. Here. Always is. You're three weeks prior to the October 1st hunting in Michigan. And if you get that hint, a little bit of cold, besides hearing the football game playing somewhere in the background, you, right. you, 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 everybody's wearing camo and everybody's, <laughs> they're going to eat that samples up. Tell you that right now. That's right. Ah, I believe it. We'll, we'll have to bring uh, bring an you know, extra cooler full of samples to make sure everybody doesn't go home hungry. That, that's right, and that's awesome. So that's coming up in in September. Uh, is there anything else that you're looking towards down for the end of this year? Um, I know we talked about this a couple days ago. Um, this is actually a busy time of year for him. You wouldn't think so, but he kind of made yeah. sense of, of why it is. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's that time of year when everybody's sort of going through their freezer and kind of going through the remains of what they shot from last year or any wild game that's left from, uh, you know, from, from the previous year and trying to use that up going into the season and especially going to deer camp, you know, trying to make sure you've got all your meals prepared for deer camp. And, um, it's a hot time for us this year. So, um, orders are up manufacturing, obviously takes some, some time for us to, to make sure that we've got every customer satisfied and, uh, Going into the season, it, it's really a hot time. Um, the other hot time is definitely coming out of winter, going into spring. People are firing up their grills and getting outside. So um, right now and, uh, you know, late spring, early summers are our two hottest times. So we're busy. We're very busy. Awesome. And uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. Do you want to stick around for the last segment of the show? Yeah, why not? Let's do okay. it. Okay. Um, so with that, we'll take our break to the last segment of the show, and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, fourth segment of the show. Danny, uh, is there any seasoning left, or are you eating it all? I tell you, that, that bear rub is pretty good, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> there's nothing left. All right, so last segment of the show. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Got Rob Harrell on, Rebel 6 Seasonings. <laughs> um, offering a 20% discount if you go over to the website. When you check out, use the promo code. North Journal. There you go. North Journal. North Journal, 20% off. There you go. Um, I want to keep you on the last segment of the show because I know you you live in Michigan, and I just want to talk a little bit about Michigan around here, right? I always yeah. do. So how you feel about the new uh, the uh -oh. regs coming out? Uh-oh. <laughs> We're going to go there, huh? <laughs> no, it, see, that's yeah. why I used the last segment of the show. So we, if you we, offend somebody, <laughs> we, we're at the end. <laughs> And we got to keep it. I was going to say, how, how much time do we got left here? We got 15 minutes. <laughs> but we can stay thing. on live after we get done with the podcast portion. <laughs> Cause yeah. I, it, you know, um, I, I, I've, I've been lucky enough to, to take the QDMA Deer Steward One course. Um, ah. There's so much information through that, through that initiative. And the, 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 the biggest takeaway that I have from being a, a QDMA Steward One uh, graduate is is nobody is going to fully understand the immediate impacts of something that man tries to implement on nature right 
Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their theories. We're going to try these new regulations, obviously, to see how this works in Michigan. Wisconsin's doing their thing. Each state is going to try their own experiment, so to speak. But the, the part that bugs me is when they come out and say, okay, this is what's going to fix this. this is what, I don't think anybody knows what's going to fix it. Um, it's, it's up to hunters to be tolerable on what changes are going to be in place and understand the changes and, and just accept the fact that everybody's working towards the same thing. We're all trying to make sure we've got a sustainable deer herd going out to our future generations who hunt with years now, you know, down, down the road and in the years to come. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting when you hear the different opinions from even different biologists and, uh, in the different regions. So I don't think there is an answer out there, guys. It's, it's just, uh, what Michigan's decided to do here. And, um, we have to adapt and adjust and, and see how it impacts things. And, and, uh, I think we're all along for the ride here. Yeah. It's, uh, there's no quick fix. I, I I'll completely agree with you on that point. I I've taken deer seward one as well. And, I know what you're talking about. It's uh, it, it's this is something that's going to impact our hunting probably for the rest of our lives. Actually, yeah. you know, it's been around since CWD '67. TB's been around for quite a while. Um, the only thing that that kind of irks me a little bit is is we're start. It seems like this year we're starting to hodgepodge these little areas, and and, and it's like a little test plot here, a little test plot there, a little test plot there. If we're going to do something, you know, do it across the state, do it for the whole state, and then stick with it and, and figure out what's working and what's not working, and then it, make those subtle adjustments. And I think that's where people are getting really ticked off. Yeah. You, you, you mean like, like ban baiting, but you can, ba- you can bait on a weekend, but you can ban it? Yeah, that's part of You know, they're, they're talking about the special hunts, you know, with, with the veterans and the uh, – I'm trying to remember the, the name. Liberty the, hunt, the Liberty hunt, and then the the uh, the disabled hunts yep, as well. It's, exactly. I understand why they're trying to do those things, but if it's bad, it's bad. You know, yeah. let, let's let's get rid of it for the whole state and let's let's yeah. include the UP, not just part of the UP. It's just, but it, it's a political hotbed. That's the problem, and it's just like yeah. it's like any other politics that are out there right now. And I don't care if you're de- Democrat, Republican, conservative, uh, conservative, liberal, uh, middle of the road, uh, far left, far right. It doesn't matter. We all got to live in the same spot together and work together, and that's what we got to do. Yeah, yeah you're, I think you're spot on there, Mike. I think having a level playing field is what everybody is sort of asking for, and not having it broken up into different segments or counties and, mm-hmm. and trying to understand different rules for each, uh, you know, depending on what road you're hunting off of. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it can get out of hand pretty quick if that's uh, if that's a uh, you know process going forward. Danny deals okay, with that literally. So, literally. I am a mile outside of the antler list permits in the UP. Literally one mile to the to the railroad track, oh. and, I, and and I'm like, okay. I I I I went to the biologist and I said, okay, I'm gonna play dumb here because I'm up to my ears in does. I, I I'm sorry, I am. And you're telling me this railroad track is where you stop it. How did you pick the railroad track? Because it's a it's a natural bo- it's a boundary it's that everybody a, can recognize. It's, it's exactly what you said. And and I was like, why don't you just make it the whole county? Go by the county. Yeah, but but the guy living across the street from you in the next county, if a road divides it, then he's going to say the same thing. Right. Exactly. So it, so this year, I can't shoot does, even though they're going to open it up for bow season, unless I go a mile south. You just have to come to my place. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, so that was my political question, okay? Okay. I had to get that out. Are you going to play nice now? Now I'm going to play nice. Because with any guests that we have, we have to ask them a few questions. And the first question is that we typically use and ask is, okay, what's your favorite wildlife meal? What's your favorite recipe that you would say, hey... I'm hungry. This is my go-to recipe. I'm going to have this. And it's going to have Rebel 6 on it. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming so now. Right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, there's nothing that be, beats venison backstraps. I mean, that's that's something that, uh, you know, usually doesn't even make it home from deer camp uh, once uh, once we get, you know, a nice healthy kill down. And um, really the, the best way that we make it is before the whole Rebel 6 company got started, it was a little bit of butter a little bit of garlic, some salt and pepper, and you can marinate that together. And when you, once you melt that butter down um, and you slice those back straps into little medallions, mm-hmm. you can mix it all together, put it in the freezer, 
let that butter sort of coagulate around the medallions, take it out, throw it right on the grill, and that stuff will melt in your mouth, I promise you. I'm ready. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> making me hungry again. I know, right? Well, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip the next question. We'll come back to this next question. But the other question is, you're traveling to your, your hunting spot or, or wherever you're going to do a hunt. Uh, what's your go-to music or what do you listen to in the in the in the vehicle that you're heading you maybe wherever you're going to do a hunt or something what kind of music are you listening to so i'm i'm sort of a big podcast guy as you can imagine right um i I do listen to wired to hunt podcast quite a bit that's something that uh, sort of always gets me amped up for any hunt but uh, as far as music goes blasting uh ted nugent's fred bear on the way to a hunting property you can't beat that right on I, I like that. Right? You can't, you can't, you, the so you know rock and roll soul then? A little bit, yeah. yeah. There's, there, there's that, and then uh, I was up bow hunting one time in New Wago, and somebody in the morning was, must have been playing it out their trailer or something, because that's what you could hear echoing through the woods. Nice. That was pretty good. All right. So we now know his music. Yep. We know his food. Yep. But he's going out to hunt. Got to have a snack. He's got to have a snack. So what's your go-to in the backpack snack? Cliff Bar. All day, Cliff Bar. I don't know what it is about those things. They're small. They're, they're not that big. Um, but they fill me up. And they allow me to stay in the tree stand longer than what I think I would. So, yeah, it's uh, except for that noisy wrapper that they come in. Um, I usually try to take that wrapper <laughs> off and put it on a Ziploc bag. But those Cliff Bars, uh, they, they do me pretty good in the tree stand. I never thought about that. Unwrap them before you, you put them in the backpack. Oh, yeah, put, put them in, in a Ziploc. I never thought about it. Duh. Hello. That's easy. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Of... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. An easy button. Right on. Um, was it all the questions? Well, he already answered the one about his most memorable hunt. Yep. Right? We, we, yeah, we, we definitely had to touch yeah. on that in, 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 in two steps because it seems like for everybody you have – Pre-family mm-hmm. and then after family, and, right. and there's, yep. there's just there's just some things that uh, go along with each each segment of, of your life adventure as we go there. But, well, you uh, talked about your mem- uh, memorable hunt or or experience, you know, sitting there around the campfire going to deer camp the first time. Uh, let me throw this at you: what what's on your bucket list? I mean, number one thing you want to go out for? What, what what's still you haven't done that you want to accomplish? Yes. Something out west, honestly. Um, I, I have not been out west yet. I've talked to many friends who have been, you know, elk hunting, uh, mule deer hunting out in Wyoming or, or Montana. Um, anything out there. It could be an antelope hunt. Anything. I just want to get in the mountains and uh, just experience the ups and downs and uh, see how much, you know, the, the terrain kicks your butt as well as the animals that you're after, too. So um, elk. Uh, mule deer, antelope, like I said, it's something out west will uh, will definitely get my blood going. You know, here in the last five years, maybe ten years, it seems like that's and that's kind of where I'm at. I've, I've been to Colorado once, and it kicked my rear end. Yeah. We were mule deer hunting, and and we did it the easy way, and it still kicked my butt. I wasn't ready for it. But uh, you see people like Danny and I working out now, getting in shape just for hunting here in Michigan. But people. They go to the extreme. I call it extreme hunting. Are, are you yep. pushing yourself to that limit? You know, it's not so much about taking that. It is about taking that animal, but it's also putting yourself in an environment that not only challenges you mentally, but challenges you physically and some maybe even emotionally at times. I mean, it, it's hard, hard hunting. No, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I've heard the stories from friends about, you know, packing out a, an elk, you know, four miles from the truck mm-hmm. and just what that does to you. But, you're you're going pure adrenaline at that time and they look back and like i don't know how i did it but you know it's amazing that my my body was able to be pushed to that point and, and come out of there you know uh successful and healthy and um obviously it takes a lot of training ahead of time to be able to do that but still being able to push yourself to the limits is something that uh you know really gets them excited yeah i think it, it goes back to that primal instinct almost oh, yeah one thing nice i think about antelope uh that's an early season type that's a, a september I think, I think you can start, so. yeah, start september. To, yep. yep. you know so if you want to do an early out west the antelope would be a good one i think tim andrews is getting ready to head out there probably for yes the first hunt i've seen him 
looking at what he's doing. But uh, that's awesome. That See, you got to have those, you know, uh, for everybody it's different. Some people mm-hmm. want to go to the Yukon. Some people want to go out west. Some people want to go to New Zealand. Right, uh, right. I think Denny Steiner's in Australia or something. Yeah. So. Different country. Di- Some place other than your backyard that you're accustomed to to put yourself right. outside yeah. of your comfort zone, you know. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Pushing those limits, so you, you know, and 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 and, and, and Rob tra- travels a lot more than I do uh, for work, mm-hmm. and he's been to a, a couple of various countries, but I don't think they actually hunt in those countries. Am I right? Yeah, I, if they do, you got to have some sort of special tag. I know that. Okay. So, yeah, I don't even know what you'd be after over there. To be honest with you, no, no, I agree. I, you know, I've never thought about that until it, we were just yeah. starting to talk about this, and I'm like. You know, he's he's been over the ocean and everything, and it's just like, well, what, what, what? Wait a minute, what do you hunt there? <laughs> right. You right. Know? But and uh, what do you use to hunt them with? Because cer- certain countries, you know, don't allow bows. Some, some countries don't allow firearms. I mean, it's yeah. just such a wide range of different dynamics. I think I think Africa, you have to have a PA with you. Yes. At all times, yep. and then yep. you can use whether it's a, a gun, bow, or crossbow. But you, you know, they have mm-hmm. limitations as to right. what you're after. Absolutely. So. Well, I tell you what, we're uh, we're bumping up against it here for the end of the show. Uh, we can continue the conversation on the live stream here for just a little bit, but let's go ahead and wrap up the, the podcast portion. Uh, Rob, before we let you go, once again, give everybody the website uh, where they can find Rebel 6 Seasonings at. Yep, Rebel 6 Rubs and Seasonings can be found at www.rebel6rubs.com. It's R-E-B-E-L-S-I-X-R-U-B-S.com. So all letters, no numbers. And, uh, again, um, use the uh, promo code, code North Journal for 20% off. And uh, again, guys, thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. And, um, you know, again, Mike, let me know as soon as you get that elk down. I'll send you uh, some nice elk rub. I'll hold you to that, man. And uh, I'll, I'll slide you a, a few steaks that way as well. For uh, Now we're talking. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll throw them on the grill and try them together. How about that? That sounds great. All right. Well, I'll tell you, anything else, Danny? No, 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 really. Would you quit eating all the rub? Jeez, oh, Pete. Mild, wild <laughs> bird rub. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you on the podcast, uh, we appreciate you tuning in this week. Don't forget to go over to Rebel 6's website if you'd like to get some of their product and use the promo code North Journal, and you will save 20% on your order. So and we'll put a link up on Facebook, and I'll make sure to put a link up uh, with their logo on our webpage. All right. Well, that'll do it for us this week, folks. Y'all take care. We'll see you again next week. And don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limb Walker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Max Cultipackers. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe. Until next week on the Up North Journal.